Huddersfield is a very proud town, but we are surrounded by giants. For me, the Terriers, we have spirit, it's a working class community. It's just incredible. The history we have here is absolutely outstanding. Welcome to British football. It's the tribalism of fans. You know, we have fans next to each other and they're cheering and chanting with each other, but it creates an amazing atmosphere and it's so different. And you know something? It's amazing. We are a working class club. And I say hand on heart, this football club is amazing. So I'm confident Kevin's gonna pick a real good example of a British football club. But we are surrounded by giants, yeah? And if you look at Sacramento, Kevin is also the same. And you have to find a way of being successful against all the odds. And Kevin's found a way to do this. I guess me personally, I'm surprised that someone of Kevin's age and ability to retire chooses to keep diving back into the fray. The fray of excitement, the fray of business, and he doesn't flinch at those things. Um, it is a small shop. We work rather effectively and nimble together. Hey, Kevin, you got a sec? Yeah, what's up? Um, take a look at this. I've been just doing some web searching since we got back to the office, but look at this stadium. I, I didn't know it was this, this beautiful and picturesque. I, I was reading a little bit about it myself. I think it's a, like a 20, 25-year-old stadium, something like that. Looks like it's got good bones. I'm actually kind of excited because, uh, you know, with that call like an hour, yeah. there's a lot of questions we have for uh, Dave Baldwin. He's a pretty well-respected guy that I've figured out in the area, so he's going to have a lot of information. I've been reading a little bit about Huddersfield. I really like what I'm seeing. You know, it's, uh, I feel like I'm connecting to it. We're going to learn more about it. Cool. Yeah, I think in an hour, right? Okay. I'll see you. Let me know. I see Kevin being legitimate as to who Kevin is in his inner core, back to his upbringing, back to those characteristics that get you to this stage of his life, the successes he had that were not given to him, successes that he had to take risk to reach out to grab those challenges. And he's very humble. He's very community oriented. He's very family oriented. And I think Kevin represents a lot of that. Hi, Michael. Are you ready? Yeah. Good evening, Kevin. Hi, Mr. Baldwin. Dave, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing. Is the name or Kevin? No, I'm it's it's, Ke it's Kevin. No, it's Kevin, and I I had, I had to refer you. <laughs> look, you're you're the Brit. We're at, we're we're we have to you know look at you guys in a more proper fashion. You know, we're those Yanks that you know we just don't. We have a hard time speaking English. No, bro, well. My Yorkshire accent's a little bit uh, strong, so I apologize. If there's any words I use that you don't understand, please uh, please flag with me and I'll translate. So in terms of my role in the process, um, primarily obviously from Dean Hoyle, the current owner of the club, was to actually find an appropriate new custodian, let them see exactly what the business was about, give them a really clear pathway as to what the capabilities are, and to execute that, that transaction to meet the governance requirements of the English Football League. Well, listen, I know it's late at night there, and so um, I, I appreciate it. And I know we have a really, uh, we've got a lot of questions. It's quite an unusual situation. Obviously, I highlighted it in the presentation deck that came along with the finances around. This has quite tight time constraints. And in addition to that, it also has other external shareholder issues that we need to resolve. In 2019, Dean got quite poorly and was in hospital for a number of months. This was quite well documented. It literally was a near-death experience. So he did at that time then look to find a custodian that he would sell the majority shareholding to, um, which is a gentleman by the name of Phil Hodgkinson, who he sold 75% of the shares of the club. Unfortunately, Phil's businesses during COVID um, took a, a, a negative effect and, and that affected potentially his ability to service the football club going forward. So Dean stepped back into the breach but the key to it being he recognised that responsibility as a custodian and wanted to protect the football club that he loved and supported. Under the EFL regulations, if we do not resolve the sale before the 23rd of March, we have a big decision to make as a football club. But in the end, the transaction that will dovetail 
So the the, 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 the new purchaser will be 100% acquisition of the football club. So this is the bit where I refer to it needing someone who's got a bit of entrepreneurial spirit and knowledge. You know, you, you, we, we're talking to other interested parties, uh, some of the ones that are more corporately driven. Well, I mean, look, I, I, I did talk to um, Jake, who's a person that we, as we mentioned, we both know him. Um, and I've known him for 10 years. And so when we started talking about, you know, just sort of serendipitously before this opportunity, you know, um, presented itself, we were talking about championship uh, teams, you know, just in general with their opportunity. I never thought that it would be Huddersfield. Um, but this opportunity availed itself. I, I, look, I am an entrepreneur as well. Um, that's sort of how I, you know, built what I have today by and large. So I'm not afraid of those type of risks. I'm prepared to do this. Um, Michael, why don't you just send Dave my personal financial statement? Awesome. So in, in response to that, plan, so one, thank you ever so much for providing that so quickly. That's really good to hear that you can do that. The fact that you're prepared to put this information on the table even without an NDA, I, I really applaud that. We're going to know really pretty quickly whether there's a deal here or not. From what I've seen, it's very interesting. I've always had a great fascination about the, 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 the championship league. My job is to help navigate, create the simplest navigation to the end end game on this one because you're right, we don't have a moment to spare. We, we can't afford to make a mistake. Well, I know we're going to be in touch. And uh, again, appreciate you no. staying up late, staying up late oh, to take the call. My, my pleasure. Like I said, I'm here 24-7 to, to, to make this a successful outcome. Good enough. All right. Thank you. Thank Dave. you, Dave. All right. Yeah, take, Bye now. Take care. See you later, Michael. Bye. You as well, Bye. 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 Oh, well, it's pretty, pretty amazing, Kevin. It just, just it almost sounds like it's too good to be true, and I, I don't know what we're missing. Let's go take a look and see what they've got in terms of their data warehouse. We've got just a few days left to figure out that if we're going to do this or not and be 100% certain we've got to move forward. Thanks. We all hear it's too good to be true. And these are things that don't come your way that often. You've got an opportunity to buy this thing if we can kind of get our ducks lined up. I'm just running as fast as I can, and it's just, it's exhilarating. gone through most of the documents thus far. I've gone through the lease agreement with the stadium. I've got a little bit greater understanding of the training ground. I still need to get a little bit clearer there. Have but you seen anything that you think sort of jumps out at you, positive or negative? Well, everything they've been telling us on the phone seems to be aligning with what the documents say, what the financials seem to be showing from a historical standpoint. So uh, there's, there's a lot there on any one of those pieces, Kevin, whether you're going to start with just the stadium and the, the state of the stadium or the capex or the maintenance or what you want to do? Well, I'm looking at the same thing. I'm, first of all, I'm seeing the land around it. Huge development opportunity. It really looks pretty from what I can see in the pictures. Very picturesque. But I see that But I see that there's a lot of opportunity to bring some type of you know, ecosystem into the area because it sort of sits separately from everything else. That's one thing that I saw. The other thing, it just enlarged, just as I look and, and read about um, Huddersfield, it's a working class community. I identify with that. It's more of the genesis of, you know, sort of my beginnings. I think there's a sentimental side of me away from the financial part that wants to move forward on this. I was born into a working class, you know, sort of borderline poverty family. Uh, I lived with my uncle and my grandmother and my I had two cousins along with my two sisters and my mother. We all lived in a, a small duplex. I shared uh, a bedroom with my mother and my sister who, who were in one bed. And then unfortunately in a twin bed, I got stuck with my other sister. But it didn't, we didn't know the difference during that time. Um, it probably really set my soul for the future. I like the charities that I think Dean Hoyle and you know the organization that picked. I think there's some other ones that we probably probably could add as time goes on. But I like that side of it. They've, they've done a terrific job, I think, of building that into the community, along with just this natural ecosystem that it has there. I remember in my head somebody saying, you made a lot of money, 
and you need to help other people and you know where you came from. And so you need to help others because this money can also be taken from you as well. It's just part of my DNA. You know, I, I feel like we, we should help people, we want to help people. And if maybe, maybe you make a difference with, with those people in some way, shape or form that you don't even know. I'm excited. I remain really bullish on, on things. Unless you tell me a reason why not, let's continue to move forward. Well, this is a, something that obviously intrigues you and you're interested, so my challenge is to prioritize it and figure out how to make it happen, but this is a different game we're about to jump into, Kevin. Thank you. There you are. I'm willing to take the risk. I know there's risk. You ready to move to England? Here, dude. Let's Thanks. go. Good luck. Just talking about the manager, Neil Warnock. He's the older guy, right? Older guy? Yeah, he's sort of a legend. He's an institution. And so he's been there for like five or six games so far, trying to pull them on, ensure they don't get into relegation. Okay. And they're in trouble right now, right? Yeah, I think they're just a couple games from being at the bottom or close to the bottom of the table. I haven't even talked to you in a few days, man. How, how are you guys, like, close? It's moving fast. Holy oh, come on. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Packed pretty much, but... So I read, so these guys, so we're, we're not, I say we, uh, we're the we're the underdogs here, pretty decent. Yeah. Well, Norwich, who they're playing is they're they're playing at really the top of the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm tripping, man. Like honestly, it's like obviously invest in the Kings, Republic, you know, teams we love, but like this is English football, man. This is this is the championship. Like it's the real. Uh, oh my goodness. Is it going well? Uh, I think we're doing we're doing the diligence. Yeah. No, I mean, my feeling is right now is, you know, we're, we're full speed ahead. I mean, we're not, we don't have a lot of time. I think I told you. It's yeah. 10 day eva evaluation process. That's insane, by the way. Like, it's not crazy? normal. It's right. not normal in any, in, in, in any deal. But time is of the essence on this one. I mean, if we can come away, look at that. Wow. Pretty. That's about as easy a goal as you're going to get, but a tough pass. I feel really pretty good about this deal, but I'm still, you know, it's five days, you know, it's... Five days, you know, it's across... A week, ago, a week ago, I didn't even know that really Huddersfield existed. You're on the cusp of buying something that you haven't even, like, test-driven yet, like a car or something across the world. You know, <laughs> everything we've seen is Google Earth. <laughs> and watching, watching this match, this is obviously the first match we've been able to see. Some, whoa, so somebody a, got red carded. He got red carded, that's why. Took him out. Oh. I don't really get emotional about these things. I, I think the deal, the thrill of the deal is always, an, is always probably plays in the cards. But the reality of it is, is that <clears throat> I think it's an opportunity. Look, you kind of, you only have so many swings yeah. in your lifetime. This is one of those swings. Uh, unless we see something that is really unusual, I believe this deal's gonna go through. Have you thought about the people though? Like American coming in? Yeah, I'm a little bit tentative about that. Yeah. You know, look, I really respect um, the institution, you know, of football. Hey, I can't even speak the American English language. I, I can just imagine what I'm gonna do when I blister, when I blister you know, proper English. <laughs> well, 100% of the time that you've been on the verge of owning this football club you haven't lost oh oh and one so congrats dude congrats and many more good all right i'm heading home because right. you know the wife all that thanks i'll be stay back. out of trouble dave i'll thanks. be back for good match, uh, man. next match all right we'll be in touch 
beautiful evening, low 60s here in the capital of California. Adam Moffitt, Rob McAllister with you. It's the 2023 home opener. And it always feels great to be back at home for Sacramento. This is a club trying to build on 2022. To the middle, here's a chance, and it skirts through, and it's A.J. Patterson who gets on the board first for the visiting side, and Charleston has a 1-0 advantage early in the first half of play. Herrera finds it at his feet, Cicerone waiting for it. Cicerone, it takes a deflection, here comes Gar! hits in the back of the net! Cicerone returning the favor to Jack Gurr. The athletic play by Gurr on the right side, the hustle by Cicerone in stride. Even though they're down a man, they tie the game one to one. Nothing has leaked out, and we got the one minute left. Not cutting it close. Ten days or less. You know, you think about this, where we are right now. Think about it. Two weeks ago, we really didn't know a lot about Huddersfield. Yeah. Today, we're in the process of now purchasing the entire team. Okay, there's the group test. All right, we're out. <clears throat> we're live. Yeah. No turning back. No. All this right. Is it. Your whole uh, world's about to change here. He couldn't do the same due diligence as what you would normally expect. But normally buying a, f uh, a football club takes months and months and months. So at some point you have to say, I'm doing it. And Kevin did. I don't think I didn't have a time at that point to think, was I doing the right thing? But the reality is when you start to hear the public domain and their response, that was a lot of fun to read. Not only is it already on Twitter, there's already, con everyone's Googling your name. Apparently you have an appointment in Missouri with We Love Waxing LTD, so they're very happy at your hygiene. So, <laughs> so, That's, wait a minute. The UK folks were really endearing. Kevin's the most American looking guy I've ever seen. Oh, they're gonna put a cowboy hat on you soon. Well, there you go. You got the Ted Lasso mustache. There's an American hairless terrier. The American hairless terrier, is that what, is there a message here? Uh, please keep Neil Warnock. Uh, thank Coach. you, Dean Hoyle. Oh, yes, we did it in 10 days. Have I ever purchased a business in 10 days or less? The answer is no. So does that come with risk? Of course that comes with risk. But I think that, I think that you know, a year from now, it'll look very different than what it does today. But we can't really get there until we get the formal approval from the EFL. Until further notice, we are respecting the approval process of the uh, EFL. Uh, any questions, we'll refer you to the statement we've made. 100%. Okay. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks. Right. Thank yeah. you. Woo! Hey, there he is. He's got a cowboy hat on. <laughs> Look in the cowboy hat. We got to within two days and Kevin came forward. He has taken a leap of faith in the speed in which he's done it. We didn't know what the reaction was gonna be. And Huddersfield Town had never been outside of local hands. This is a bold, confident, scary move. Oh yes, we did it in 10 days. It was either gonna be at that point or maybe never. A championship club, one step away from the Premier League. Will Kevin get there? Anything's possible.